What's going on? Your boy's back at it again. Trams on deck. Today, we got a heavy hitter. We got the Weller 107 Antique. Yes, sir. And this actual one right here, as you can see with the seal, is a single barrel select one. So this one right here is a little bit more rare than the normal uh, 107 itself. This one's about at 53.5%. This is a weeded bourbon. I personally prefer weeded bourbons over rye bourbons. To me, weeders are sweeter, so I prefer that taste profile for me personally. That's not to say that I don't like rye, I just don't prefer it over most weeded ones. That's just my personal preference. So this one has a, a corn mash bill. Instead of using a rye, they use the weeded one. To me, uh, that draws out more flavors, more sweetness, and uh, make it a little bit more bolder for them. I like it. And so this one right here, like I said, this is the Weller 107. I've been trying to hunt down the William L. Weller for a while now. That's in the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, which is this Buffalo Trace as well. But those uh, only, that release is only once a year. Same with the George T. Stag. I've been also hunting that one as well. And I, I'm uh, sad to announce that I did not win a raffle for the George T. Stag 2019 around the corner from where I live out here in the San Diego area. There was a private uh, uh, liquor store that had a raffle. So last month in January, he had a raffle for a uh, Rip Van Winkle 10. And as long as you spend $50 or more, you could enter in, uh, that automatically enters you into the raffle. So if you spend $200, that's four chances you get to win. So every $50 is another uh, chance. So be as it may, I will end the raffle for January. I struck out on the Rip uh, Van Winkle 10. And this current month, which the drawing was yesterday, um, I struck out on the George T. Stag 2019. But the good thing about it, had I won, was that they sell it at uh, retail or MSRP price, which is pretty much uh, $100, versus the normal price that they sell it releasing around here. I don't know what area, you, you know, it depends upon what area you live in that dictates the price. In California, if you get George T. Stag or Weller anywhere around here in the San Diego area, it's gonna run you at least, I would say, five times markup, especially for the stag. The weather is even more expensive. The William L. Weller is even more expensive. There is a guy that sells it for $1,000, the, uh, the William L. Weller. That's crazy. Now, it's, it's normally a $100 bottle that sells it for a $1,000 bottle, and the George T. Stag is selling for $700, but you can also get that around $500. The cheapest I've seen around here is five, like five fifty, dollars and that's the cheapest. That's five times markup. So that's ridiculous, you know, uh, price right there. Now, if you live where I'm originally from in Ohio or Pennsylvania, that area over there, that's only going to run you $100. But the problem is you're only going to get uh, one chance a year to get it. And if you don't, you know, win the raffle, if you're not one of the lucky few, they actually get your hand on the bottle, you should pretty much ass out of luck until the next year. Uh, once it's out of stock, it's out of stock. I mean, you may be lucky and, and if you have a good rapport with some of your uh uh, store managers, they may call you. If you're a constant customer, they know you. They may say, hey, I got some more George T. Stag in. Do you want some? I'll save a bottle for you. And that's usually, usually what I do. I, I get a report with my, my store managers and whatnot. Uh, but I'm just saying, it's you can get it at a pretty much retail price in that area because it's ran by a state out in California and everything is independent. So you can do, you know, you still have however much you want. Out there, like in the spice like Ohio, New, uh, North Carolina, and the Pennsylvania is ran by state, so you can get it for a lot che uh, cheaper. But that's the problem, if you can get it. Out in California, you can always get it, but the problem is you're going to pay for it. You know, it ain't cheap out here. You got to pay to play. So the markup is going to be insane. So it's kind of like, you know, the gift and the curse. Like, no, I can't get it, you know. Like my uncle, he can't, I can't get him to get me in a George C. Stag because they don't have it in, in where I'm really from in Ohio. So can't get it. Well, so I hear I can get it, but it's going to cost five times more. So it's a gift and a curse, you know. And for the most part, for $500, I'm going to let it sit right there on the shelf. It's going to stay right where it's at. But real quick, I was uh, recently just, if you are a fan of the Weller, um, they also have the Weller 12, which is a little bit above this one. Uh, the Weller 12, I was recently uh, traveling at Chilongo, and at the Houston airport, my favorite restaurant, Papa Do's Seafood Kitchen, I think it's in Concourse E as an Echo, um, if you go to that restaurant, they have, they sell Weller 12 at the bar for $12 a shot. Believe it or not, that, that's crazy. I couldn't believe it. I, I was sitting there waiting for some food to happen to see up in the, uh, right above the bar, and I asked how much was a shot. And I'm assuming, like out in California, you know, a shot of Weller 12 will run you an easy $50 out of here. 
So I assume she was gonna say at least thirty dollars or something. She's like, oh no, he, uh, my partner says no, it's only like um, twelve dollars. I was like, what? I, I, I had to make sure I heard it right. She said, yeah, twelve dollars. So out there they sell it for the normal uh, re retail price, not the crazy price out here. So I told her to double up. So I got a double of the weather twelve on my uh, going income because I had a layover going and coming. So I had weather twelve. So FYI, if you're in the Houston area, if you if you ever if you know what Papa Do's is, if you're a fan of the restaurant. Or if you're at the airport in Houston, at least, um, you can get Weller 12 for $12 a shot, which is like dirt cheap. You know, that's that's a steal right there, Weller 12. And like I said, and that's another one of those bottles that's hard to get as well. You know, pretty much, uh, you know, the Weller 12, the William Merrill Weller, the George T. Stag, even the Stag Jr., they're, they're not easy to get. So just a little quick heads up. If you're traveling Houston Airport, you like Weller, try uh, Concourse E. Top of those, or even in the, the ones that's in the city, they should probably sell it as well for the same price. So this one right here, I got around at the same store that I struck out at. I got I got this particular bottle last month for I hate to say it, but I, I spent like one forty for this bottle, which is insane because it's hundred dollars less back where I'm from. But the problem is, like I said, I just can't get it. So I, so overpaid for it. So yes, this this cost me one hundred forty dollars. So just put it out there. So on the nose. <laughs> This is a very mild nose. I'm not picking anything pronounced up. Just a little sweetness, and that's it. A little bit of oak and a little sweetness. There's nothing else I'm picking up. And even then, it's very foul, it's very um, mild and faint. So nothing pronounced on this nose. So uh, nothing to spend time nosing for, for a while because it's just not doing anything for me. But you pick up this little hint of sweetness and some oak on this is what I'm picking up more than anything else. This is over 50%, this is over 50%, which I like most of my bourbons to be, so that's a good thing. So we're gonna jump right on to the uh, taste. Believe it or not, I have a little kick to it. It's a good kick though, I like it. I'll take one more sip. Wow. That's a good polished dram. Mm. This one I pick up. Oh, honey, vanilla. A little toffee. Some spice, like a nutmeg. It's well rounded. When it first goes in, first thing I pick up is the oak. But as it sits on my mid palate and I swirl it around, so I start to pick up the honey more of that that vanilla flavor and the spice comes right on in and there it's very good very good on this particular one this is a not only is a 107 but it's the single barrel so this one right here is a single barrel select and this one it tells you the warehouse the floor and everything on this one so um this one right here is like i said with this particular single barrel it is not easy to get um especially around here so if you can get it at, a, at a, like I said, a, at a retail MSRP, a hey, kudos to you. If you can get, it, as a matter of fact, if you live somewhere like Kentucky or Ohio, any any state where this is plentiful, like it's like you can get two or three of them at the same time, then what you should do is let me know, hit me in my comments, so we can converse and see. I can see about how I can, uh, if you have a, a, a excess, I can get in some of those moving some of those bottles off your hands and getting them out here. So I would like to know if you if you have an excess of this, uh, let me know. So we can talk about it, see about how I can, if you have excess, I can see about maybe purchasing a couple of bottles. But I definitely enjoy this. This is something that I love, but I don't see myself spending another almost $150 on this bottle. It's because it's just excessive. It's, it's so exorbitantly excessive out here. That's like, I pretty much paid three times what the, what the bottle originally cost. So I'm not going to say I never, ever would. Taste-wise, I love it. The only factor is that this ridiculous absorbent price out here. It's like I really don't want to... Um, 
Uh, that's not something I enjoy doing, uh, but just for at least once or maybe twice, but on a, on a routine. Like this, for that price, this couldn't be my routine bourbon. Like, you know, everyday bourbon, you know, there's, you know, I could probably get my hand on some Four Roses or some Maker's Mark as my everyday because they're way more accessible and a lot cheaper. Versus this, I do like this better than both of those, but the problem is, like I said, uh, for the price that I have to pay for it out here, it it's, it it, it kind of interferes with me trying to make it in my everyday bourbon. If I can get this for forty dollars, this will be everyday bourbon for me. If I can get it for that, if it was accessible and I can get it for forty dollars, this will be everyday for me. But because of that, because of accessibility and the price, I just, it it just can't be. So it's like one of those special occasion bourbon. <laughs> taste wise, it, it tastes like it should be. So, so I'm taking another sip. Damn, it's good. No burn, no bite. Very smooth. Balanced. Oak. Vanilla. Coffee. Nutmeg. Well balanced. Very good. Scoring this one right here out of a 10. This is a solid 8, 8.5 out of a, I say 8.5 out of a 10. For me, easy. Easy. 8.5. It's one of the better bourbons I've had. I like it. I really enjoy this one. Um, it, it's it's a pleasure to drink. Um, I, but this is an eight for me for, by far, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm I'm also curious to try the William L. Weller because it's older, and, and from what I heard, it's probably one of the best bourbons ever out there. For what certain people who have was lucky enough to actually try it was to say. So, um, I would like to love to see for myself. Uh, if I wanted to uh, get it at a restaurant or a bar, they they do have something called the Whiskey House, which has some of the a largest selection of whiskeys in the country is located in downtown San Diego. I actually went, took the liberty of going down to see how much it costs for a shot of William L. Weller. And believe it or not, for one shot, when, when at least here, it's one ounce. So it's not two ounces, it's one ounce. So for one ounce, for William L. Weller Antique, it runs $100. So I was like, well, you know, I, that's pretty much the cost of a retail bottle. So the price I would pay for a bottle when I'm paying for one ounce which is like a small, a very small shot in my opinion. So, um, needs to say I didn't try it. You know, okay, I was like, that that was, I left it right there on, on where it was at. But, um, but yeah, so I struck out. I'm gonna keep trying. If anybody has an exorbitant of uh, William L. Weller or George T. Stagg, let me know. Or if you were to trade, I, I'm, all, I'm open to trades. Obviously, with someone I would trust, but be it as it may, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, Weller 107 Antique Single Barrel Select. It's a good one for me, eight and a half, yes sir. Um, if you can, if you get this at a rate of usable price, please do so. Please do so. And if uh, anything else you want to see, let me know. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know how it is. Till then, signing off. Drams on deck.